The astronomical clock is a useful function anywhere we'd need to switch based on sunrise and sunset. It can calculate the switching times for any location in the globe using coordinates or from a rather limited list of presets. We're going to define one for Dublin in Ireland. And Dublin is west of Greenwich and it's six degrees and about a quarter so we'll set that to 15 minutes and it's about 53.3 degrees north so 53 and a third of a degree would be 20 minutes we can okay that and run the simulation and we can see it is calculated for early march sunrise will be at 705 and sunset will be at 1809 going to make a small modification to this I want the light to remain on a little longer so we're going to put the sunrise offset uh, about 10 minutes later so watch the 705 apply that that goes to 715 and we want them to come on a little earlier in the evening so we'll apply that and we can see it comes on before 1800 that's okay now the time of day on the simulator is set at 5.33 at the moment. So if we wire this up, escape, link that up, back into simulation mode, we can see that the lights are off. We change the simulation time to sometime after 7.15, 07.16, apply that, and the lights turn on. Now, unfortunately, that's backwards from the way we want it. We want the lights to turn off during daytime. So escape the simulator. We can just simply add in a not function in there. Just be careful that connector is passing right through. So connect up and run the simulation again. And now we can see that the timer is on because we're between 7.15 and 17.53, but the lights are off. The astronomical clock will follow daylight savings times if you have those programmed and your logo has the real-time clock. The stopwatch timer special function is rather unusual, but works rather like a regular stopwatch. We've got an enable input, we've got a lap timer input, and we've got a reset input. The timer parameters we'll document as normal. We'll just call it watch. Uh, we can select from a time base of hours, minutes, seconds, or 10 millisecond time base, which will be perfect for our demonstration. Note that the output is analog, so you can't connect this to a digital input of another function block, but can be connected to an analog input of a function block. We'll expand and see the actual time. Run the simulation. The stopwatch counts while the enable input is high. We can pause it, restart it, pause it, restart it. The lap timer will cause the display here to freeze, but in the background, the counter is still running so we release the lap time and you can see that we're up at 14 seconds there we turn off the enable the display stays static and we can reset to better see what's happening inside the stopwatch we can use the message display to sh show the time values Message display requires an input, so we just want this on all the time for our demonstration. So for that, we'll use a status high and wire that in there. We'll configure the message text, give it a block name. At the moment, we can add in current time, current date, message enable time, message enable date, but when we select block one, we see there are four new parameters which we can monitor on the message texts. So we will set up for those. We're going to look at the time base. We're going to look at the current time. 
we're going to look at the lap time and the output time. We can drag each of these into position. and we're set up. Now when we run the simulation, we can see the message text in the simulation display. So run the timer. We observe that the current value is increasing in 10 millisecond steps and the output is keeping track with that. When we do the lap time, we can see the lap time is displayed here and the output now from the block becomes the lap time, if that's what we want. Release the lap time. The lap time is still available to us if we want, but the output of the box is now the same as the current time. We switch off the enable. The timer has stopped. The output is the current time. If we switch to lap time, the output is the lap time. Switch off again. Or back to the current time. So this could be useful in doing some timing functions, say for a pneumatic actuator, to figure out how quickly it's moving backwards and forwards and possibly give an alarm if the machine isn't performing as quickly as it might. Mm -hmm.